and only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Melbourne Business School Master of Business Analytics webinar. Thank you very much for making the time and effort to join me on this online info session to learn more about our program and the distinctive features of our Embus A program that you're not going to find anywhere else in the world. My name is Pete Manasantivongs, and I'm the academic director of the Master of Business Analytics program here at Melbourne Business School. So I thought I would start off this session by first telling you a little bit about Melbourne Business School. So one of the things that sets Melbourne Business School apart from other academic institutions is our unique ownership structure and our deep engagement with the business community. And this is seen through our corporate connections. So we are owned 55% by the business community, the remaining 45% by the University of Melbourne. And the benefit that our students get from that is that we are able to access the business community and hear from them what are the things that we need to be doing now and into the future to better prepare our graduates to meet the business problems and the business analytics problems that organizations in the business community are facing. So we get that real-time feedback loop and that affects the way that we teach our students, what we teach our students in the curriculum and how we prepare them for the job market that they're about to enter. So this unique ownership structure, 55% by Corporate Australia, the remaining 45% uh, by the University of Melbourne. This also ensures that our program and our institution is guarded by the strong academic rigor that you would expect from Australia's number one university. As a further sign of how we engage with the business community, we have a board of directors and they represent some of the leading organizations around the world. So we certainly have international companies, multinational such as Ernst & Young, EY, and also the beverage company, SAB Miller. Um, senior executives from those organizations sit on our board of directors, but we also have representation from Australian companies. So the CEO of Bank of Melbourne, we also have a, a senior executive from Newcrest Mining, an Australian company, sitting on our board. So this is also a, another sign of how we engage with this business community and how we benefit from our strong industry ties to corporate Australia. So that's our board of directors for Melbourne Business School, but even at a deeper level, our Master of Business Analytics program, our Embus A, also has unique alignment with the corporate sector. So uh, Melbourne Business School is the home of the Center for Business Analytics, and the center has its industry advisory board, and that board is represented by senior executives from a lot of corporations, uh, again, in Australia and the rest of the world. So we do have multinationals such as AT Kearney, uh, SAS, uh, BP, but also Australian organizations such as NAB, National Australia Bank, and SEEK. So again, this is proof that uh, our connections to the business community are deep and Melbourne Business School and its Master of Business Analytics program uniquely positioned to uh, teach our students what they need to know so that they are prepared to challenge um, the problems that the business community are facing right now and into the future. So whom are we looking for uh, in our Master of Business Analytics program? What are the types of candidates that we want to bring into our program? So one of the things that we're looking for in the admissions process is uh, undergraduate degree with plenty of studies uh, in mathematics, probability, statistics, and programming. So we're looking for third-year undergraduate studies in some subset of those uh, areas. Our program is highly intense and, and highly technical, and we need to make sure that the students we bring in can cope with the sophisticated rigor and the technical nature of our curriculum. Work experience is not mandatory. Uh, about 55% uh, of our students do not come in to the program with any work experience. The other 45% will come in with um, a number of years. Most of them are early career in their working life. We do not require that you've studied any business subjects in your undergraduate degree. 
any exposure you do have to business subjects uh, will of course help you as you study in our curriculum. Most importantly, what we're looking for in our candidates who apply for the MBSA program is we're looking for people who are passionate about analyzing data and understanding the insights that arise from the data to inform evidence-based decision-making for business problems that companies are facing. So if you have a genuine interest in how to use data to solve problems that uh, businesses and society at large are trying to solve, using that data for uh, evidence to support the recommendations on how to solve those business problems. Those are the types of people that we're looking for, people who, who are passionate and genuinely interested in using those skills for that business purpose. The types of jobs that the embassy will lead you to, um, there's a quite a range. So you could be looking at doing credit risk analysis. Uh, you could be looking at marketing research and analytics. There's a plethora of data that companies can collect uh, around consumer behavior. You can be uh, looking at how to improve supply chains, how to make things more efficient, how to reduce costs, how to maximize efficiency. Uh, and also in the world of consulting and professional services, there are many areas that you could be looking at data and analytics to solve those business problems. Along those lines, there is a wide range of industries that are hiring students who graduate from business analytics programs. So certainly the financial sector, banking and other financial uh, institutions, consumer goods, uh, retail, market research, in the tech space, right, telecoms, uh, technology and internet, um, logistics, supply chain, procurement, the mining sector, energy and resources, and don't forget government as well. So uh, police force, security, tax offices, social services, um, we talked about consulting earlier on, and it's not just confined to the private sector. Not-for-profit organizations also have access to data, and they're going to need business analytics professionals to understand what insights can be drawn from the data that they hold. So uh, it doesn't matter which industry you want to go into, there is a big demand for people who know how to use uh, data analytical skills to see the insights and translate them into uh, recommendations to solve business problems. So I'll talk a little bit, okay, um, uh, with the the curriculum that we offer uh, in our MBSA program. So our program is a one-year program. We start around the fourth week of January, and then we go uh, up until around the third week of December. So it's a 12-month program, and we go across the calendar year. Our program is divided into five modules, and I'll talk a little bit more in depth about all five modules and what they entail. One of the things that sets our program apart, not just in Australia, but around the world as well, is our personal effectiveness program, our PEP. This is a component of our curriculum that's embedded into what we teach with our students, and you're not gonna find that just about anywhere else in the world. It's one of the things that sets our embassy program apart from other programs uh, that you may be considering. So this personal effectiveness program, the PEP, uh, it is a part of the curriculum that helps prepare you for uh, post-graduate business opportunity. So after you've studied your master's program and you are ready to take on the challenge of applying for roles in the workforce, whether you're returning to work or entering work for the first time, these are different skills that we equip you with so that you can present your most effective self. So um, in the area of communications, we work a lot with you one-on-one -on -one and also in group settings around public speaking. How do you present? How do you influence? How do you persuade? How do you look at data, understand the insights, and then be able to convey those technical insights to a non technical, non-specialist audience using the art of storytelling. How do you write effectively? How do you communicate through the written form uh, your insights? How do you uh, construct a proper business case? Um, how do you have difficult conversations? How do you tell uh, people news that they might not want to hear and do it in an effective manner? A lot of our curriculum is also based on syndicate work. So how do you work in teams? How do you interact with different personalities and still get the best result within your team? How do you take leadership in a team setting? How do you support the leader when that person is taking charge? How do you give and receive feedback, uh, both positive and also constructive, and make it uh, effective? 
So we spend quite a bit of time in communication, both in the oral and the written form, and also we spend quite a bit of time in um, working on teams, right? The syndicate assignments you do in the curriculum and also the practicum uh, opportunity that I'll talk a little bit more about, that's done in teams of three to four students as well. We actively support your career skills development. So we equip you with the ability to own your own job search. So uh, we help you with writing CVs and cover letters and how you tailor them for different organizations or even different industries. We teach you how to network. So how do you go into a community event or a um, conference and make connections with people that uh, uh, you want to access or, or that you want to learn from. We help you prepare for interviews. So how do you best put forward your candidacy so that the employer uh, views you as someone that uh, they want to hire onto their workforce. It's not just short-term stuff either, so we teach you how to plan your career, yes, right after the MBSA program, but also in the short term, two to three years after the program, medium term, what do you have to be thinking five to seven years into the future, and long term through the end of your career, what are the things that you can do to continue to actively manage your career trajectory. And again, in all of these uh, PEP components, we do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but we also do them in group settings so that you can learn from the experiences of your classmates. To enhance the PEP uh, part of our curriculum, we also teach you certain areas of business that interact with those communication skills, teamwork skills, career planning uh, for the long term. So we bring in speakers in different areas. We also uh, give you exposure to how to do case studies. Uh, the practicum is built into our curriculum in Module 4. Uh, we give you uh, some training in the ethics and privacy implications of big data. So how do you use data responsibly? What are some of the legal constraints that you need to be aware of as you handle data? Uh, and also, our purpose in the MBSA program and also the Center for Business Analytics is we want to support the use of evidence-based decision-making uh, arising from data. So uh, we spend quite a bit of time teaching you how to be more effective decision makers, how to influence uh, decision makers, and also how to be aware of certain biases that may impede you from making effective decisions. So that's a, an encapsulation of our PEP and um, and this is one of the things that really do set our program apart from any other program that you'll find in the world. So I mentioned earlier on, it is a 12-month program that starts in January and goes up to mid-December. And the five modules can range anywhere from six to nine weeks long. Module one, that's an introduction to business problems. So what we do is we introduce you to a typical business case and we get you to start thinking about it before you've had any training in data analytics skills and before you've had uh, deeper training into areas of business problems. We also get you to start working in teams and to think about how you operate efficiently in teams. So uh, what are some of the things you have to be aware of if you're dealing with conflict within teams? How do you work in diverse teams and get the most out of the diversity um, in the team? How do you uh, manage team dynamics? How do you communicate effectively? How do you provide feedback? How do you lead? How are you effective as someone who's being led? So these are some of the things that we work on in the very first module because it will set you up for success throughout the rest of your curriculum. We also uh, embed in module one a lot of the orientation activities that help familiarize you with your classmates, with the embassy program and staff, with Melbourne Business School and uh, the rest of um, the university and also the city of Melbourne. So it does serve as an orientation but very quickly on we get you to begin studying the curriculum because uh, it is one year and we want to make your time as effective as possible. So after module one you do get one week of a break and then you start with module two. That is the Business Analytics Foundations module. This is where we start to teach you some of the advanced technical skills that you will need to know as business analytics professionals. So we're going to get you to do uh, plenty of programming. So R and Python are the languages that we tend to use, but you'll also get exposed to others in the course of your studies and practicum. We cover data warehousing. We start to teach you some of the uh, advanced techniques in the world of statistics and probability. 
We do optimization. So how do you maximize? How do you minimize? How do you optimize given a set of constraints uh, that you're facing? How do you make effective decisions, both from a quantitative standpoint, but also a qualitative standpoint? I mentioned a little bit early on some of the decision-making biases, the psychological biases that people can be susceptible to. And again, the PEP, uh, Personal Effectiveness Program, that I just spent quite a bit of time talking about, we embed that into the curriculum throughout the program. So that's Module 2, and then after that, uh, you get a two-week break, and we go into Module 3. Module 3, Advanced Business Analytics, builds on Module 2. So we go a bit deeper into the sophisticated, advanced technical skills you'll need to be an effective business analytics professional. So machine learning, right? How do you use algorithms? How do you program them so that um, you, you optimize a lot of the data handling that you're working with? Uh, data visualization, so how do you effectively communicate in uh, pictures and, and other graphics the story, right? The, the insights under the data and um, the insights that you've uh, uncovered. Predictive analytics, right? So these are advanced uh, statistical modeling techniques that build on what you learned in module two. Text and web analytics. So uh, this is how uh, we use programming uh, to analyze uh, word, the written word, and how uh, we can find out insights and patterns from uh, pieces of writing that you might not be able to find if you didn't have the sp uh, sophisticated techniques. And we continue on with uh, the PEP. Uh, there's a two-week break after Module 3, and then you enter Module 4, which is our industry practicum. And this is other another aspect of our program that uh, you're not going to find in other programs the way that we do it in the uh, we take advantage of the deep industry engagement that we have with our corporate partners so that's a five week presentation that our students or five week uh, practicum placement that our students do that leads into a presentation to the client at the sponsoring company in week 6 there's a one week break after your practicum in module 4 and then we have career week in the beginning of October. So that's where we bring companies onto campus. So these are organizations that were uh, sponsoring the practicum placements, but also other corporate partners uh, that MBS has and our Master of Business Analytics program have as well, where we bring these companies on campus to talk about their organizations, to talk about roles in business analytics that are available, and also to share with uh, our students the hiring process. So what are some of the things that you need to do on campus or through their website to uh, enter your candidacy for the roles that are available. The final module, module five, uh, business analytics applications. This is where we revisit some of the material that we showed you in module one, introduction to business problems. So we look at those um, business cases again and the case studies that we showed you earlier in the year. And now that you're equipped with the advanced analytical techniques, now that you've had some opportunity to apply those skills in a real business uh, problem during the industry practicum in module four, we revisit those business cases and study, and um, you will be able to tackle those case studies and data sets much more sophisticatedly than you did at the beginning of the year. We also uh, do some treatment around analytics in different business functional areas. So you're going to study finance analytics, you're going to study marketing analytics, and also supply chain analytics. After you've returned from your industry practicum in Module 4, we will do some more PEP work with you in Module 5 so that you are ready to tackle the post uh, embassy job market that uh, awaits you, whether that's in Australia or anywhere else in the world that you might be after the program. So just to give you a sense of what a typical week looks like during the module, so the way that you should approach our program is to think about it as a full-time commitment. So uh, you should approach it as if you're going to be with us Monday through Friday, typical working hours, 9 to 5 p.m., uh, with work on evenings and weekends as well. So in each module, we'll teach you four different topics, and you might have uh, a certain topic on Monday, a different one on Tuesday, and so forth. So it could be stats learning on Monday, computing on Tuesday, optimization Wednesday, and data warehousing on Thursday. Within each day, the way that we break it up is normally in the morning, so between 9 a.m. and noon, you'll get lecture from the instructor. Uh, you'll get some opportunity to do practice problems and to see how the theory and framework get applied in real business problems. We'll give you a, a lunch break from 12 to 2 so that you can eat properly, 
get some exercise, rest, uh, and also meet with people from the business community um, uh, that uh, you might be targeting uh, in your post Embus A career. Uh, and also, after lunch, you come back for the afternoon session. So that's where you do a lot of the practical application. So we'll give you more exercises uh, to work through. There'll be lab sessions where uh, you can um, do some small exercises and get instant feedback about whether you're doing it correctly or whether um, you know you might need to, to take a different approach. But uh, there will be support staff as well in those afternoon lab and exercise sessions so that what you learn in the morning, you can immediately start to practice and implement uh, and master that knowledge. So that's a typical uh, week uh, in our program. One of the things that you'll want to be aware of is that our Embassy program is a different experience during the week than what you might be accustomed to. So in many undergraduate and other master's programs, you might have about 15 to 20 hours of lecture a week. So you may have a three-hour lecture on Monday morning and then nothing again until Tuesday afternoon and then maybe something on Thursday morning. The way that we use your week is a lot more structured and a lot more efficient. So you're with us, again, for the whole day, pretty much 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, and you'll also want to expect to do uh, some independent study and syndicate work and other preparatory activities in some evenings and also uh, over the weekend during certain parts as well. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about the faculty and staff who will be looking after you in the Embassy program. One of the things that we have that you're not going to find at many other places is a dedicated staff for just the program. So I look after the curriculum and the overall academic experience that you would get in the MSA. There's also a program manager who makes sure that you can co focus on your learning and the academic experience. So she looks after the administration. So currently it's Helen Steer. And so she will set a lot of the things up in the program so that you don't have to worry about it. You can concentrate on learning and getting the most out of the curriculum and your interaction with the faculty and staff. We also have a dedicated member in our Career Management Center who looks after just the Embassy students. So that's the Associate Director uh, for Embassy. Currently, it's G. Gill. And so the three of us work together uh, on a regular basis, almost on a daily basis. We, we interact with each other to make sure that we are creating the program that will allow you the most uh, opportunity to, uh, to learn effectively and also to work on developing your career management skills. In addition to that, I have colleagues from all around the world who teach in our Embus A program. So these are some of the brightest minds uh, from, from everywhere, and they've come to the University of Melbourne and Melbourne Business School to teach in our program in different areas. So we truly are a world-class career-enhancing program. So uh, you're going to learn from the best minds, the most passionate instructors, uh, from everywhere in the world. So that's one of the things that we pride ourselves on is the intimate interaction you will get between the instructor and you individually as well as the cohort that you are a part of. Uh, it's that intimate learning experience that really enhances your ability to absorb the material, to ask questions, to interact with the instructors and their teaching assistants, and to really maximize uh, your learning experience and your ability to grasp the material that we expose to you in our curriculum. Okay. So I'll tell you a little bit more about other areas of corporate support beyond our industry engagement and ties to the business community. So uh, in some years, we do have scholarships that are offered by our corporate partners. This will vary from year to year, uh, as well as our MBS Foundation, which is here uh, within the school. In certain years, we may be able to offer uh, scholarships through our external partners our, or our internal MBS Foundation. There are also prizes that are awarded by our corporate partners uh, during certain parts of the program. So we have the Forthought Roberts Prize for the best student overall. Uh, and in certain years, we also have prizes awarded by companies in certain areas of the curriculum, such as data warehousing or marketing analytics. So uh, this is an opportunity for you to engage with uh, our business partners, but also it reflects the, the deep connections we do have to, to these friends of Melbourne Business School and the Master of Business Analytics program. So I mentioned Module 4 and our five-week practicum projects. So our students spend five weeks actually on-site at 
our uh, partner company's uh, location to work on a real business problem. So our students will get access to real customer data uh, and they are working on a real problem that these companies are facing and they actually are located during the five weeks in the offices of these companies. So this is another example of the deep engagement that you will be able to experience with the business community if you come into our MBUSA program. So these companies reflect a wide range of industries. Remember earlier on in this webinar, I talked about the different sectors that you can pursue jobs in, and this is a reflection of that broad range. So uh, we have consulting, we have uh, retail, we have uh, beverages, banking, uh, market research, uh, advertising, uh, a whole array of different industries that partner with us to give our students the opportunity to apply their skills on real business problems and our students are making a genuine impact in the success of these companies on those problems that they're, they're giving our students to work on. So I'll share a little bit about our class of 2016, the current students in the program. There are 62 students and the median age is 24. Out of the 44% um, of our students who do have work experience, the median work experience is 3.5 years and our class is very balanced in terms of gender. So it's almost a 50-50 split. Actually, there is um, a slightly higher representation of women than men in our program, but it does feel balanced in that respect. So this uh, is a slide that shows our undergraduate majors that our students have completed. And you won't be surprised to see that a lot of them come from highly technical, quantitative, uh, analytical areas. So uh, economics, finance, engineering, maths, statistics, computer science. And this reflects uh, the reality that in the admissions process, we are looking for students who can succeed in our highly advanced technical curriculum. And so those students will usually come from undergraduate degrees in the areas that you see, uh, because those are the degrees that require uh, maths, statistics, probability, programming at the third year undergraduate study level. So your investment into this MBUS A learning experience, the current fees for the entire program, including the practicum experience, is 53,700 Australian dollars. That figure is up for review uh, on an annual basis. P fees are paid at the beginning of each of the five modules, so they are spread out over the course of the 12-month program. If you're an Australian citizen, you may be able to use fee help, which is a government-backed uh, tuition loan deferral scheme, so it's comparable to HECS at the undergraduate level, and also some of our students may be eligible for certain other support benefits from the Australian government, such as uh, the Youth Allowance and Oz Study. Uh, I've mentioned already scholarship opportunities that may be available uh, year to year, depending on uh, availability through our corporate partnerships and uh, the MBS Foundation. Australian citizens and international students are all eligible for these scholarship opportunities. Uh, and there is not usually an additional application required to be considered for these scholarships. All candidates as part of the standard admissions process will be considered. You may be asked to uh, attend an interview if you're shortlisted for some of these scholarship opportunities. I've already mentioned that you're with us pretty much the whole week, so Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You're studying the topics that we teach in the modules and also the uh, personal effectiveness program and other business topic related seminars that interact with your career development. Uh, it is a highly intense program. Uh, we actually are teaching you one and a half years worth of academic study material in 12 months. So we've condensed 18 months of learning into one calendar year and that's one of the reasons why it's such an intensive program. As such, you really should expect to spend evenings and a good part of your weekend during the study year working on MBUS A uh, academic material. So uh, we want to make the most of your 12 months and that's one of the things that you'll need to do on your end to make sure you benefit from the program that we've set up for you. Uh, you'll also need a laptop uh, during the program that will run the software that we require for the different subjects and if you receive an offer of admission, we will provide more details about computing resources you'll need to bring with you to get the most out of your learning. So how to apply is fully online. Just go to mbs.edu slash apply. And these are the documents that you'll need to upload 
to uh, the system. So we'll need your resume. So uh, we'll need you to provide details of any uh, internships you've done, any full-time work you may have done, if, if you have full-time work experience, and other extracurricular and community uh, events um, and activities that you're a part of. Uh, we absolutely need to see your academic transcripts. So uh, if you're currently studying in your undergraduate program in your final year, please submit the transcript you currently have and uh, we will eventually ask you to submit um, your results from your final year as they become available to you after your first semester or quarter or trimester. Uh, if you've completed your undergraduate degree and you're already studying, then you definitely will need to submit your complete undergraduate transcript. Uh, if you've done any postgraduate study, feel free to submit those as well to strengthen the viability of your candidacy. We'll need to, to get your personal uh, details for visa purposes, so uh, we'll need to see uh, your passport and any visas you have so that we can comply with the government around student visas. If you are shortlisted for an interview, we will contact you and these will either be done in person if you're in Melbourne uh, or elsewhere in Australia if we happen to be there. If you're overseas, uh, it'll likely be done by video Skype. So not everyone who applies will be invited for an interview, but uh, an interview is required uh, in order to be considered for a final offer of admission. So as I mentioned earlier, all candidates that have applied by the closing dates for each round will be considered for scholarships, and we reserve the right to conduct further interviews as part of the admissions and also scholarship consideration process. So uh, important dates, we are currently in the middle of round three admission, so we've closed off and finished up uh, consideration in round one and round two. Round three, the deadline coming up is the 2nd of September, so uh, this is the penultimate round for domestic candidates and is the typical final round for international candidates, so those who uh, do not have Australian citizenship or permanent residence visa. If you apply by the 2nd of September, you will be notified about three weeks after that whether you've been selected for an interview. An interview will be conducted in the two weeks following that, and you will be notified of a final outcome of admission uh, around the midpoint of October. We do have a final round, late application round. Uh, the deadline for that is the 21st of October. Uh, that's typically for domestic candidates only. However, if you are an international candidate, we may be able to assess you on a case-by-case -case basis. It's not guaranteed. Uh, and so if you are an international candidate, we really do want to encourage you to apply in time for round three admissions. Uh, beyond that, uh, we may or may not be able to consider your candidacy depending on uh, where we are with the application process with domestic students and also how likely it is that you would be able to get a student visa in time to start in the fourth week of January if you were made an offer of admission. So again, apply sooner rather than later, and domestic candidates, you do have until the 21st of October, but the same advice goes for you. If you're in a position to apply for round three, you can be considered earlier, and that's generally to your advantage. So I hope that you've given um, you've been given a, a sense of what it would be like to join the MBS community. So yes, we have a focus on the pedagogy and your academic learning experience, but also, we want to construct the right cohort of students. So we want you to join a like-minded, uh, talented, passionate uh, group of students in your cohort who are gonna be uh, the next set of business analytics professionals and then further in the career, the leaders in business analytics within the, uh, the business community. So um, I hope that after this webinar, you've gotten a sense of whether you do want to join Team MBS. And if you do, then, uh, you know what steps you need to take in order to apply, submit your candidacy, and you know what to expect in terms of timelines and also the admissions process with your application. And look, this is really just the beginning of our engagement with you. We want to continue the conversation. So uh, we value your feedback. Uh, if there's anything that you want us to know, so if you have any questions about the admissions process or the curriculum that I haven't explained uh, that you uh, have in your head, please feel free to contact us. Uh, you can email us at study at mbs.edu, and there's also the phone number that you uh, can call to reach our admissions office. So um, I hope that this was uh, an informative uh, session and that you got a lot of benefit from uh, attending this webinar. Uh, and uh, look, I also want to 
give you the opportunity to provide any questions. So if you haven't submitted questions on this online interface, then again, contact us at study at mbs.edu or just give us a ring on the phone number and we'll be happy to answer those questions. And perhaps on a future uh, webinar, some of the questions that come through on this webinar, we'll share the answers to and we'll continue to build that bank of questions that typical prospects do ask so that uh, we can make this uh, webinar uh, more and more informative for you. So thank you again for joining us on this webinar and we look forward to hearing from you again soon. All the best.